All right, we're going to do another example just like the one we just worked. We're going to write logical expressions for some statements involving sets. So the first one we're going to analyze is f is a subset of the power set of A. So f, when we see the script f, we know that f is some family of sets. And this is the notation we use to indicate the power set, the power set of A. So again, our goal here is to use what we call the OK symbols. These are the, you know, for all, there exists ands and or symbols, equalities, element, not element of, and our conditional and biconditional connectives. These are the symbols we'd like to use, and we'd like to avoid using symbols like the uh, set brackets, unions, intersections, subsets, power sets, things like that. So off the bat, you know, what I don't like about this statement right here is the subset, and then also the power set. We'd like to get those out of there and write an equivalent expression that uses the symbols that we prefer to work with, ands and ors and things like that. Nothing wrong with this, just we'd like to manipulate it into this different form. So how can I do that? So the first thing is let's work on getting rid of the subset symbol. So what does it mean for, the, for f to be a subset of power set of a? Well, this means that every element in f is an element of p of a. That's just the definition of a subset. So we can write for all x, x in f implies x is in p of a. That's the definition of a subset. So we can use that. So the next thing let's work on is this. What does it mean for x to be in the power set of a? We don't like that power set symbol right there. It's in the list of our quote bad symbols. We'd like to get rid of it. So what does that mean? Well, because of how the power set is constructed, remember the power set is just all subsets of A. So given a set A, you construct the power set of A by finding all subsets of it. So you take all the single elements as, as elements of the power set, all two set elements or two set or two element sets as elements of the power set, all three element sets, etc. You take all combinations that you can find. So one thing that this means is that x is in the power set of A is actually equivalent to x is a subset of A. So we're not going to prove this. If, you, if we can prove it and think through it more carefully, but this is a fact that we'll use here and we'll use in other problems, and this really just follows from how the power set is constructed. That if x is in the power set of A, that is logically equivalent to x is a subset of A. And you can write out examples and convince yourself of that if you'd like. But let's go ahead and use that here to replace x is in p of a with the logically equivalent statement x is a subset of a. So we got that out of there. But all we've really done is replace one bad symbol for another, right? We got rid of the power set symbol, but we brought in another subset symbol. But that's okay, because we know how to deal with subsets. We can leave the first part alone. And what does it mean for x to be a subset of a? And that means that every element of x is an element of a. So we have to be a little careful here. I've already used this variable, x, so I can't use the variable x again. I need to use a different kind of dummy variable, so to speak. For every element y, where y is an x, y is an a. So all we've done is replace this with this. Just use the definition of a subset. And there is a nice final answer for this first problem that we worked. We were able to write this in a logically equivalent form this. Let's work another one. What about a is a subset of the set 5n squared minus 2 such that n is in the natural numbers n? How can we write this using our OK symbols? Well, first of all, let's work on the subset. Let's get rid of that. We know what this means. We can replace the subset with the subset definition. It means that for all x where x is in a, this implies that x is in 5n squared minus 2 such that n is in n. That's just the definition of a subset. So I can write that. Okay. What can I do next? What does it mean for x to be an element of this set? So every element of that set has the form 5n squared minus 2. So if x is in there, that means there exists some k in n such that x equals 5k squared minus 2, right? Every element of this set has the form 5n squared minus 2. So if x is in that set, that means it has to equal 
5n squared minus 2 for some value n in n. Well, that n value n and n I'm here using here is just what I'm calling k. There has to exist some element of the natural numbers such that 5k squared minus 2 is equal to x. Okay? So this lets us get rid of these, bad, quote, bad symbols here and replace it with this logically equivalent statement. And we are done. At this point, we have kind of all the good symbols in, and we have gotten rid of our subsets and curly brackets, and we have a logically equivalent statement that we like. Let's do another one. What about x is in? And actually, this is the uh, problem we worked on our first example. We don't need to work through this. We've uh, done two more examples here on this page right here. And uh, we are done working the two problems that we set out to do. These were a little bit different. These are interesting because this one used the power set. So we got a nice new result right here that we find very useful. We didn't prove this result, but we'll see this pop up. And like I said, you can work through that and prove that to yourself. And then we also you worked an example here where we actually had the curly brackets that we tried to get rid of. And we were able to do that by noting what the pattern was and realizing that x being an element of something like this means there has to exist some k and n where we have this equality. So slightly different examples, but the same approach, working from statements to perfectly equivalent statements, just using symbols that we prefer, logical ands and ors and equalities and things like that.